Anyway, what's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, Scoop. back from vacation. Sam Claiborne, ready to go on vacation. And Marty Sleva. Yeah, Scoop. going to Kansas City this weekend, aren't yeah. you? Ooh. Thanks so much for canceling the show last week without yeah. me here. Um, just everything yeah. shut down. Just wouldn't, it would, yeah. just wouldn't be the same. Studio without lights you. are off. I think we got 20 questions down next last week. Oh, we crushed but, it last uh, week. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I think you would have made it faster. <laughs> It was, yeah, that it was like a 10-question uh, run last week. I had a few yeah. tweets that are like, hmm, it went so smoothly. Because <laughs> <laughs> you didn't ask, like, does your character have glasses? <laughs> we have a great show for you this week. We're going to talk about Metroid Prime 4. We're going to talk about Far Cry 5. But first, the SNES classic, as it is referred to by decent people everywhere, is a real thing that you can maybe buy this September, we but got, probably got, not. Got, 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 it's got, happening. Can we release the balloons and the confetti from the ceiling? Bam, 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 Sean, can you <laughs> hit the button on that? <laughs> I feel like Nintendo we did it. Like, just took notes after watching a few game scoops, and mm. we're like, oh, these are mm. the games they want. Surely yeah. that's what they did. I will. They nailed it. They never nail stuff like this. It's been so long. Like We, we were like, had this frustrating virtual console rollout on Wii. It was even more frustrating on Wii U, and it's like, just give us your old games to play. And then when you think about like the old game collections that we normally get, it'll be like Sonic One, but not Sonic Two and Three. Yeah, you know, for like a Genesis collection, it'll, it'll have, be like, like Two and Three, but not One. And you're yeah. Like, well, yeah, yeah, and you have to collect them all or whatever. But this has like every Super Nintendo game. I couldn't believe that. Except list. Donkey Kong Country Two and Three. Well, people are upset about that and Chrono Trigger. Well, and people are going to be upset about everything, but this is incredible. It's not the entire library. It's top it's, to bottom. It's fantastic. 21 legitimately great games mm -hmm. for 80 bucks. So uh, slightly f less games for more money. That, that yeah, checks that, out. That, that checks out. Uh -huh. About $4. Uh, first of all, what do, you guys, what do we think about the game lineup? The game lineup is strong I think with it, this one. I think it includes some of the my favorite games of all time, some of the best games of all time, whether you're looking at Earthbound, Final Fantasy VI, yeah. Metroid, Mario World. They're all huge games. Yeah, they're all incredible games. I mean, I've said before that the NES games, I love them, I grew up with them, but I feel like they, they're harder to go back to than that 16-bit era. They're just so perfect and feel so great. And uh, to me, that's like the golden age of just classic video. Like, it's, yeah, it's just so good. It means so the golden age good. of video games. Honestly, yeah. I think it's the best console of all time, and I think this takes some of its best games. It's got my Most favorite of games, games of all time on it. Mm -hmm. They're so, so, I mean, I was saying they're big games. They're lengthy games. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's kind of amazing to think, like, if you sat down and played Final Fantasy, you know, three right now, which is six in Japan, yeah. like, you, you'd spend the See next you 120 in, hours yeah. doing it. in a couple it. months. But, like, you know, like, some of the other games were felt, like, just as big at the time, even, like, the Donkey Kong Countries, and then, like, uh, Punch-Out. Like, that game is, like... I, liked, I love lengthy, that Super like, Punch-Out cool is Super Punch-Out. Yeah, and, yeah. and the Kirby Metroid. games, Kirby's Dream Course and Punch-Out are two games that you can replay a bunch. Just it's, it's not Dream Course. The it's two Dream Kirby Course games and, are in And Superstar awesome. Saga. And they're both great. Yeah, I used to just say Dream Course was good, but now I like Superstar also. Yeah. I think it's so funny that you were just playing and talking about Superstar Saga, yeah. and now it's going to have another chance well, to get Well, and you know why? It's because I made a stack of Super Nintendo games, I took a picture, and I was like, this should be in the SNES Classic. And the biggest response response when it was almost one to one yeah and the biggest response was kirby uh superstar should be in there went to portland bought bought the game like found a cartridge copy of it and i've been playing it a lot it's super cool it has like a metroidvania section mm -hmm. in it where you collect um things from other nintendo games like the screw attack from metroid and like weird stuff from earthbound stuff mm -hmm. it's like it's totally neat so the only reason I bring up uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3 is because those are Nintendo games. So, like, I understand why Chrono Trigger, like, you know, they work with their partners to get, you know, Mega Man X in there and Final Fantasy in there. But the third parties, you know, they want to keep some of their games to themselves to, you know, put on Virtual Console or resell people. Sure. But Donkey Kong Country, that's Nintendo's own game. So it's a little bit of a bummer to not see those sequels. I wonder if those two had tech in them that it's weird. Well, speaking of which, maybe I the mean, emulation. Star Fox has never been reissued by Nintendo. Well, yeah, we haven't even talked about and Star And then Fox the Star Fox, too. Mm -hmm. But, like, yeah. Those, that, that's incredible that those are in there and the tech works and everything. That's like, actually a good point with those. the FX chip, you know, because that's that is tricky for that's in Yoshi and Mega Man X. Too. Yeah, that's tricky for the the mode. Eh, maybe Mega Man X too, but it's in Yoshi's Island for sure. Oh, well, the mode seven effects are. Do they use no, an FX, FX is in mm. Yoshi also, and that's like really hard to emulate. So I'm curious to see whether yeah. they, you know how that feels and looks. And that Yoshi's Island is so much better than the GB Game one. Boy one. Yep. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's really good. So obviously an incredible lineup of games, but uh, Mike from Memphis writes us to say, I am in love with the SNES Classic. However, the list seems downsized. Are there any games you wish they would have added? Mm, a lot of people oh. are a lot of people are missing Chrono Trigger. Mm -hmm. That doesn't bother me. I mean, it's not a Nintendo game. Like I feel like we're always lucky to get any third parties, you know, yeah. willing to be on board. And we have Final Fantasy and we have Secret of Mana. 
you know, we have Castlevania, we have Mega Man. Um, Secret of Mana is is an amazing thing that that's on this. I mean, I think Final Fantasy three is an amazing thing that's on yep. this. Like those two are really great. It'd be great to have yeah. Final Fantasy four and Chrono Trigger, but like you're not gonna have time to play those. I also I, I also appreciate that they're calling it Final Fantasy three. I don't. You don't like. That? <laughs> We're uh, at a point I mean, now that's where that's was, confusing. It was, it's really how confusing. How it was released at the time? Sure. Yeah. We, I kind of yeah. I respect that aspect of it, but it's also like several people in the office were like, "Which one is this?" So. When I first started getting into video games journalism, we were still close enough to f- the Final Fantasy three and six thing that you would refer to like the the real Final Fantasy three, the NES one, as FF three J. That's what people would call it. Oh, them. I never heard that. Yeah, that because that was like that would separate it out from FF three US, which was FF six. I mean, I could list you know probably another fifty Super Nintendo games that are great. Yeah. That could be on it, but like this is a really, really good selection. It's like, true. Really yeah. good. We were gonna get nitpicky. I think Tetris Attack would be a good, which is in the Japanese yeah. version. Uh, yeah. Good I mean, nominee. Act Razor would yeah. have been good Act to have Razor's in there. Amazing. Tetris yeah. versus Doctor Mario is a yeah. really cool other puzzle game where you can play Tetris against Doctor Mario. Just it was like then Puyo Puyo other, Tetris. And then nobody ever got to play the other Mega Man X games because X two and X three yep. are really rare yeah, and are very expensive. No one ever so thinks about it. Cool to about collect those in, in a collection, and I'm sure there's gonna be a Mega. My collection, which has those in them, but they're weird because they also have XX, FX stuff. They have like polygons on screen to look like Star Fox. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. There's some smaller things like Something Zombies Ate My Neighbors was a game I played yeah. all the time. Co-op. Uh, a lot of the Disney games, which some of them we got. Oh, really, yeah, the Disney like, stuff. We talked about wanting an oh. afternoon collection too, with stuff like Aladdin and Lion King and Mickey Mania or it, Mickey Magical Quest. It would have been really cool to get Aladdin back on. Yeah, because that's a game but, that is lost think, the time. Ultimately, yeah. these are all nitpicky compared to. I mean, the the, the games top to bottom are are great to yeah. perfect. Uh, what about the eighty dollar price tag? I'm personally fine with that. Comes with two controllers. Uh, the Get controllers long, are cable. longer, yeah. <laughs> two feet. Longer. Yeah. Hey, if you pay eighty bucks for it, you're lucky. You're gonna be lucky. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. the bigger problem, I think. That is the big problem. Yeah. The top comments on our uh, announcement article reads: The SNES Classic has now been discontinued before release due to high demand. Please understand. Yeah. Sign uh-huh. Nintendo. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. It's like I I I was soured on this whole uh, retro console idea after the NES Classic. I was I was unable to ever get one. So you still don't have one? No, I was never able yeah. to. They never so they, were in like uh, in stock. The yeah. NES Classic. You know, I played one once or twice in the office, but I never had one either. Do they have like save states and stuff and offer? Do they yeah. like modernize I, the? I think each game has multiple save yeah. states. Yeah. So like sort of like Perfect. a ROM that you would have on your computer or whatever. You can even if you're not at a save point in Final Fantasy, you can just save your game and turn yeah. it off and come back and restore. Yeah. But they don't do like fancier stuff like the rewind that was no. in the Disney collection. Right? No, no, that's sort of bespoke to like that and rare replay and stuff like that. Because I, you know, there's these games. I mean, I, I already said I love and adore these games. But some of them it can be hard. You know, it's hard to go back and play some of this stuff. And so I'm trying to figure out whether that this specific collection is going to be nice for that. Like everything's really accessible. Cause I like NES like you. You had hard games because they're like for yeah. replay value yeah. and they are adapted from quarter munchers in the arcade yeah. and stuff like that. This like things got so refined on Super yeah. Nintendo. I mean, it's that's really what Super cool. Nintendo was to me is it took all those amazing ideas on the NES and like arcade games and refined them and made them like home games that yeah. you could play in bite sized chunks and it saved, you know, pretty, you know, uh, liberally. I mean, it, like that's, that's something that I loved about. Uh, uh, rare replay was like I got so much more enjoyment out of Battletoads because I could just rewind and oh, I was finally able to like, really see clever, more yeah. of that game. But I save don't, states help a lot. I don't think there's too much in here that is like that. Punch out will be interesting with save states. Yeah. That really helps you learn in punch out. So you don't mm-hmm. have to. I mean, they have passwords to get back to where you need to. Yeah. The NES Classic was very easy to hack and mm-hmm. add more games to. I wonder yeah. if Nintendo is going to try and circumvent that this summer or just at least make it a little bit more yeah. difficult. Well, it's a little bit like at that point, why did you even buy like? You know, like you can play NES I mean, yeah. games. Yeah. Anything that has yeah. a screen can play NES games. So why do you want to buy an NES Classic with the 30 games on it and load another 60 games on it? It's kind of like, well, I don't know. If you want to make an emulation box, like it's, you're breaking the law, first of all. But why, why buy an NES Classic to do that? Have they released what the poster is going to look like yet? Yeah, the NES Classic did come with a pretty cool poster. Yeah. So. <laughs> Stay tuned for that. Uh, Scoop Nation was very interested in the SNES Classic this week. We got so many emails sent to gamescoop at IGN.com. This one came from Diedrich. He says, what are your thoughts on Star Fox 2 being finally released on a mini console like the SNES Classic? Do you guys think that Nintendo intends on releasing Star Fox 2 on virtual console? Mm. Seems like a waste oh, to wow, just yeah. add it to the list of games and not make a huge deal out of the release. Yeah, it's like that 
is the only place you can play that game now is this NES Classic, which makes it even more of a collector's item, right? Yeah. As, at least for now. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think this, like, this is the thing that cements it for a lot of people as a must-have. Like, this is literally the only place you can legally play this video game yeah. um, ever. And supposedly a com more complete version. The ROMs you can play right now each have stuff missing. They're not this polished, complete mm -hmm. version. And they probably had to do more work even now. There was, like, a mastered original version, but uh, and nobody's ever played that uh, outside of Nintendo. And now this probably has some, you know, additional polish to it. That mm -hmm. costs money, and, yeah, maybe it'll get yeah. the most out of it by releasing it in other places. Yeah, I totally wasn't expecting this. Like, we were all expecting the SNES Classic. I don't think any of us were expecting an unreleased game. Do we have yeah. to review it? That's uh, funny you should uh, mention <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, we'll totally review it. <laughs> this email comes Great. from Big Tony Big Style. Big Tony Style. Uh, and he has two questions about Star Fox yep. 2. Only one, one of them. One question, Tony. Will IGN do a review of Star Fox 2? <laughs> oh, yes. We already answered that one. I'll die. <laughs> uh, you know, Star Fox 2 wasn't the only canceled FX game at the time. There was mm -hmm. FX Fighter, which is like there's magazines with pictures or of like these Virtua games. Like Virtua Fighter? Yeah. yeah. Their answer to that? Yeah, totally. And there's, there's two others also. And uh, those were all canceled. They all had like these great 3D effects. They, they look pretty good. But Nintendo 64 is out. So yeah. Nintendo is like, we can make much better looking 64 bit games. And they just, they just completely quietly shut yeah. these projects down in whatever state they were in. And man, Star Fox was really far along, apparently. I do think, you know, Star Fox 2, it's very exciting. It's very cool. Like, that's a headline grabber, right? And it gets everybody's attention and makes them want it. But it does feel a little, it's like, hey, you want to play this game? You've been wanting to play for 20 years. You got to buy this $80 box, whether you want to or not. It's well, like, really? Except put the game on Switch. Yeah. You may you may not even be able to buy it if you want to. Yeah. yeah. I think they will eventually. Like, That's a good point. Maybe a scarcity will encourage them to put yeah. it out on a yeah. system. I'm not I think it's cool. I'm glad we're getting to play the game. Um it feels a little mercenary that they're putting it behind, you know. I mean it's a bundle. They're bundling it up with these nineteen other things that you may or may not want to revisit. That being said, it's nineteen of some of the best things of all time. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, Nintendo has said they plan to offer the SNES classic throughout the end of twenty seventeen. <laughs> And that they Did have, they say that? And yeah, they have, a solid they three they have no, no other comments to make at this time. <laughs> oh, well, they, they have, also said that there, it's going to have, there's going to be more of them than the NES Classic. We don't know if that means 10 more of them. Or <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the Earthbound community should be very excited about this because it's saying <clears> that, like, a canceled NES game, <clears> or sorry, SS and NES game was uh, resurrected, right? Mm -hmm. and, oh, man. Uh, there's a Mother 3 for Game Boy Advance that everybody's always wanted. Uh, there's a fan translation of, and it yeah. just never came out here. Um, that game, like in a potential next year Game Boy Advance, if this becomes a pattern, then a Game Boy Advance home console or an actual handheld, who yeah. knows? GBA Classic cool. that could have Mother 3 on it as yeah. like, mm, that's interesting. Yeah. I just want to play that. On I Switch. would say, like, hey, vote with your money and go out and get the system, but you're going to be paying people, like, you know, $300 that aren't Nintendo yeah. to get the system. So. <laughs> That's a tough, tough prospect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all twenty of these games, like the, any, yeah, it's twenty, right? Twenty-one. It's games, twenty. Right? I believe Star Fox is the twenty-first game. Oh, okay. Um, all these games, you know, the NES Classic was amazing, but it had all these games and like this handful of games. And it's like I don't really care. Yeah. Like every single one is like I'm gonna play them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's stuff we even like Mario RPG, Super Metroid, mm. like mm. I mean, all these amazing games. Mario RPG is one that was really hard to find at the time. Mm -hmm. It's beloved now. It's yeah. It came out what four, three months before the N64. Yeah. It's super yeah. hard to find. That'll be a great one. Seems great. It was Mario's made by Square. Yeah. I don't it know. Is a great, it's a really great RPG. Square Soft at the time. Yeah, Square Soft. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would hope that now Star Fox 2 is getting an official release that whatever the virtual console for mm -hmm. Switch ends up looking like, eventually it'll end up making its way there. I would hope so. Yeah. Well, that's Same. my, like, I, I'm torn between, like, I've been hopefully very enthusiastic and been communicating my enthusiasm for the SNES Classic, but uh, in the back of my head, I'm still like, well, I'd rather play all these on the Switch. And like I'd rather I would pay eighty dollars just mm -hmm. to have a download to my Switch. That's right. Yeah. I would pay and eighty dollars like, for these twenty for the games. Super Nintendo be so like what, like a quarter of a gig for all of them. Or and whatever, then they don't even that. need to, they don't even need to ship me a box in the yeah. mail. Like it's it's better for Nintendo. They save money. It's it's better for me. It's more convenient. So that's the thing that's in the back of my head. It's like this is super cool news. But please, like, sort out Virtual Console on your hit on your hit new home video yeah. game yeah. system. We are still waiting on that. You just call it a hit new home video game system? Isn't that is that incorrect? I mean, no, I thank guess you. I've never. I've, thank you. I've David. literally <laughs> never turned it on in my home. I've only. It, it is my hit portable airplane. Oh video no, I only system. play it in my home. <laughs> when I'm home, I only I play, play it on airplanes. When I'm home, I play it on my TV. I've never. I don't even have my dock. I think Jose took my dock. 
He just, Which is rude because he's not coming back. <laughs> I think uh, Nintendo is going to have an interesting fall because they have to push Switch for the very first time. But last year, I think the most like mainstream talked about hardware was ended up being the NES Classic. Nintendo yeah. had nothing going on. Like I heard about it in NPRs and the New York Times. Like weird, like like you know, public. Yeah, yeah. The public was really interesting. Our parents it. knew about that. Yeah, our yeah. parents knew about it. And so I think they're trying to do that again. It's a different audience. But, like, how are they also going to get people to play the Switch? Well, they also, I mean, not to get too inside baseball, but these consoles are all manufactured in China. They buy factory time. So for every single SNES Classic that's made, you know, there's fewer Switches coming off the assembly line. So they're trying to <laughs> balance. A, you think that's the same place? I mean, I think that I think that uh, this is an opportunity cost to everything that you do. So um, you know, they're kind of trying to figure out they have they have their total manufacturing capacity, right? And like, it is what it is. So yep. the fact that this exists and the NES Classic exists is such a different era of Nintendo yep. than what we've had for the past fifteen years. Mm. Just like them not really being able to capitalize on nostalgia and do do it right. And man, they're getting it right. I'm just so excited for this thing. Uh, the second part of Big Tony Style's question about Star Fox 2 is, how would you go about reviewing a game that was made during the mid-90s that may or may not stand the test of time? We'll just have Sam do it. Yeah. Seems fair. I'm not going to comment <laughs> on that. <laughs> no, it's like, it's, it's uh, you have to kind of decide, are you is this meant to be a, a recommendation for right now for whether or not you should spend the money on this game? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an it's an interesting case because this is part of an eighty dollar collection that's going to be hard to find. So yeah, it's, like, yeah. It, it's, a, it's more like a fun thing to read. It's like a novelty. So yeah, yeah. it's just cool to do. Like it's, it's I don't really we've talked about. I don't really envy Dan Staple. He's Dan Staple's insider reviews editor. He's on Scoop sometimes. Uh, yeah. His job is getting harder and harder. Like reviewing game, like a game came out, you reviewed it. Now. You know, it's early access and day one patches yeah. that we may not have access yeah. to. Games as a service that yep. are yep. much improved six months down so the line. Like the Destiny, like if you read IGN.com's <clears throat> Destiny review now, it's like that's not really relevant to the game you might be going out and yeah. buying and playing. Like it's really hard. And um, it's hard with Star Fox 2 because huh, Star Fox 2 as well, um, because exactly as you said, like that game is going to be fun from a nostalgic standpoint, but it's not going to stand up one-to-one to like 2017 games probably. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't, I don't want to have Dan's job. We'll leave uh, Dan to figure that one out. Then. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Rachel from Macomb, Michigan. Nice. Love she Michigan. says, long time Scoop fan here. I was impressed with what Nintendo had to offer at E3 this year, and I think the Switch is going to be a console that people will remember. I've been playing video games all my life, 28 years, but I realized I've never picked up a Metroid game. With the newly announced Metroid Prime 4, what would you guys recommend I start with? I want to get familiar with the series before jumping into the new game. So, I think people, most people would probably say Super Metroid is the best Metroid, also one of the best video games ever made. Uh, however, what do you think? Metroid Zero Mission is a, uh, a remake of the original Metroid released for Game Boy Advance that mm-hmm. is also very good. I have very strong opinions on this. I'll yeah. wait. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling your strong opinions are very different than my strong opinions. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> I think Super Metroid, for my money, is the greatest video game ever made. Yeah. It's my favorite game uh, of all time. You're not missing anything by jumping in there by not having played one and two. And in fact, there's a little, they, you know, the opening of the game, which is very uncharacteristic of the 16-bit era, has a sort of prologue that catches you up on the story yeah. that happened. Um, the NES and Game Boy games are not playable games. They're not great. Whoa, whoa, the NES and oh, the uh, original. Metroid, the it was very too. hard to go back to the original Metroid. I mean, they, they, they weren't. I don't think they were fun at the time, mm-hmm. and they're not fun now yeah. for sure. Metroid one and two, but they they're yeah. influential. Sure. Um, yeah, Super Metroid, and I know we Zero should. Mission to me is a really, really excellent game, one of the better games in the GBA library. But I, I don't really find it to be as special in the way that no, Super I find Zero Mission is. and uh, Fusion definitely a step down from uh, Super Metroid. Not bad games by any means. Yeah. Yeah. Get about Fusion. Yeah. Fusion's really good. Yeah. Uh, I guess. For someone, maybe we should clarify for someone who has never played a Metroid game, Super Metroid, Zero Mission, and Fusion are a different type of Metroid than the Prime yes. yeah, series. That's what's confusing Sam, about this. Maybe you want to explain. Well, the first Metroid game I ever played was Metroid Prime. Mm. And I went back and I was like, oh man, this game took a lot of ideas from Super Metroid. <laughs> it was weird <laughs> playing Super Metroid after that. If you can imagine that, like yeah. it's, it's kind of strange. But a Metroid Prime is just like a, a really well thought out first person shooter with puzzles and really cool bosses and just like a kind of an environmental vibe that um that that uh is just so fun to be in and you're you're, you're always alone 
and you're, there's always monsters around you. They can always kill you. It's a hard game. And uh, that's that's one thing that I just really appreciate about it. And um, if you want to like go get prepare for Metroid Prime 4, like any shooter that came out after Metroid Prime like was influenced by it. So you've probably played a lot of games that like are going to have you set for it. Now, if you if you so like, you know, you're going to be able to play the game. But if you care about the story, I have some bad news for you. The story is really bad in Metroid, uh, even across the board, across the board, except for in the little window of like some of the Metroid Prime games have like cool, like Samus alone on a planet. It's going to be neat. You're just going to find artifacts and do archaeological work and like figure out why this planet's empty. That's really great. This is a good story in Metroid Prime one. But then outside of that, there's like space pirates and the the baby and like it's (laughs) garbage. Yeah, that's other. Yeah, I feel like the plot of those games is bad. The Story, if you see story as like environmental storytelling and sort of like emotions That's you it. feel in an yeah. atmosphere are really good. And same thing in Super Metroid. And I think the Prime trilogy nails that pretty well. But yeah, the actual plot and character is kind of dumb. It's such a miracle that Metroid Prime turned out so good. Yeah. It's like, let's take this 2D thing, give it to an American studio, and put it in the first part. Like, it, it shouldn't like, have worked, but it completely, well, <laughs> like, not only does it work, but it's absolutely exceptional. Yeah. yeah, but it worked with Mario 64 and with Ocarina of Time. Yeah. yeah. Um, First, when you take Super Metroid versus Zero Mission, one thing I really, I mean, Zero Mission is my preferred game, but I totally like them both a lot. Uh, Super Metroid does the thing again where it like keeps Samus as a as a woman as a secret until the end of it, which is always just, I think that's cute and like at the time it was really really funny. Uh, Zero Mission is like all about Samus as like a character, and she's out of her suit for a big part of it, and I think I think that was like a really neat moment for the series. Mm-hmm. Did you guys know that in the original Metroid? Uh, there's a code you can enter to turn Samus into a woman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dang. Where did we read that? It was in one of our EGMs. That's incredible. Yeah, that's incredible. Urge, that's incredible. Um, also, <laughs> I don't think uh, Metroid Prime 4 is coming out uh, for a very long time. Oh, yeah. You got some time to prepare. I think it's, well, I think yeah. it's a hot 2019 game. Uh, got to re-release. So the Metroid Prime trilogy on the Wii is yeah. one of those, we've talked about this before, one of those really rare, like so there are certain Wii games that had crazy low print runs and are super rare. Yeah, it's very close. And that's one of them. And I had a copy of that game and I didn't know it was worth anything. And I loaned it to my friend. Mm. Still has. It's nice. The, the big change in that is that it's widescreen. And it has pointer controls and they're good. Yeah. But it, yeah, the widescreen, like the up, the, just this changing that made that game look really nice. I just have a desire to replay those games and now I'm annoyed that I don't have a trilogy <laughs> anymore. Well, uh, Rachel, I think you should experience Super Metroid. And now you can get it really easily in the SNES. Uh, it hopefully. Like well, <laughs> not, maybe not really uh, easily. Well, I guarantee you'll be easier to get than Zero Mission. <laughs> uh, yeah, was that ever released on Virtual That game's Console? super rare. Yeah. Uh, a lot of GBA and Nintendo games are rare a lot. Super Metroid is an incredible game. Uh, totally stands up. It actually has like some I, like uh, emotion. You'll... Playing a Samus, you'll develop an emotional attachment to an alien. Yeah, and it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and there's some other aliens that that there's a lot of teaching you in that game yeah. by by example, and you'll like watch this alien yeah. like doing this thing, and you realize you can do it. It's really yeah, cool. that's such a cool moment. But I guess if you to prepare yourself for Metroid Prime Four, uh, figure out a way to play the Prime trilogy. Just well, that's one. what I was getting. At. It's yeah. hard to do. I think it's just like, Super Metroid, Metroid Prime, as you guys all recommended, are great. And then when you dig in deeper, mm-hmm. just do those two. Okay, and Metroid but Prime and uh, Super. Metroid. I, I forget was Prime released on uh, the Wii U? No, it was not. None of them only on the Wii. Wii U. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's in the trilogy. Oh, sorry, no, no. no yeah, no. which is on Wii. Yeah, which you can play. I mean, if yeah, you, you can play on the Wii. Yeah, U. Prime and Echoes are GameCube, and then Corruption was uh, Wii, and then all three of them released in that very rare thing on Wii. I wonder if uh, I would not be surprised to see them come, you know, remastered to Switch before four comes out. Yeah, you know, sometime in twenty eighteen. That'd be super smart. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I think this Metroid remake of two, which is coming out, like I played I, a we lot. We didn't even of mention it. Yeah, that. Yeah, Samus Return. Yeah. That yeah. comes out next month, and like, it's from what I've played, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Like it'll be a total like if you just want to like know about well, who Samus is, what Metroid is about. It's also about an important part of the story. It's cheesy, but you'll get the storyline from it. Man, yeah, I tried to. We oh, forgot game. We even forgot to uh, mention that. Yeah, uh, Metroid: Return of Samus comes to 3DS in September, right? And, and from what Sam played of it at E3, it's looking good. <laughs> Moving on. This is Andres Benavides Ooh. from Monterey, Mexico. Nice. <laughs> he says it seems that the nostalgia factor has been playing an important role in the last years. A lot of publishers have been working on remakes and the audience seems to thrive on this. I'm thinking about Wipeout, Crash Bandicoot, Skyrim, NES, and SNES consoles, Street Fighter 2, maybe more I could be missing. 
Do you think this can have an impact on the creation of new IPs and on innovation in general for future generations? I'm aware that a lot of awesome IPs have been created recently as well, but it seems that going back to the classics has been an easy win in the last few years. For uh, film too. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, uh, <laughs> across across the board in all, all media, right? Mm -hmm. Like Justin said many times, nothing's, nothing goes away forever. Everything comes back again. What if we're in the era of a remake, and then in 20 years we look back on this and we're like, that was so silly. Everything was remade. In yeah, 20 years, could that not, be a thing? it's just going to be new stuff? No more I mean, I remakes? would kind of hope so, but I like remakes. Yeah. So just I mean, I think <laughs> game development is getting so expensive that it all only makes sense that if someone like Naughty Dog is making uh, Uncharted 4 and The Last of Us, that they also re-release the Uncharted trilogy as the Nathan Drake collection and re-release The Last of Us on to PS4. Some of you know recoup some of those costs. You is have it, to you have to mitigate your risk. Like a game is so so expensive to make that you know the people that look at the numbers and the spreadsheets, the, you know the suits, they have to make that as not uh, unrisky <laughs> as as risk free as possible. And you know one way you do that is by basing it off something that that you already have a built in fan base like. There's already a fan of this, whatever. Like in the movie business, there's already this book is already a bestseller. Mm -hmm. So, like instead of buying an original screenplay for a thriller, buy some book that's a thriller instead and make that. Is We've it, definitely had this conversation, a close yeah. one to this before, because we talked about game preservation is important. That's good, and the business side of it and stuff yeah. like that. I don't, but but if you're if this about stifling creativity. Like hopefully the game industry is just growing so much right now that there's going to be the people working on the remakes and people working on cool mm -hmm. new stuff. There's like, there's there's ten really interesting, if not good, indie games for every, you know, re re release mm -hmm. for yeah. sure. Well, there needs know? to be like there is a difference between you know ports and remasters and like a remake or like you know returning to the well over and over again. Like Last of Us PS3 and Last of Us PS4. To me, that's kind of healthy because you know again the movie industry gets a chance to you know, to capture some of your money four or five times, you know, like you go to the theaters and you get the Blu-ray or you get it on demand and then they sell it to an airplane. And they know, add yeah. Job of the Hut. And then they add Job yeah. of the Hut and you buy it again. Whereas games... Han Solo steps on his tail. Yeah. Games kind of <laughs> miss that chance, that that chance to capture people's wallets multiple times, yeah. you know, through that on-demand window and then they sell it to a cable yeah. channel. Like, so... To know with a high-ish degree of certainty, like, okay, we'll release our game now and make a certain amount of money, and then we'll do a Game of the Year edition and make more, and then we'll do an HD edition and make more. Yeah. Like, that that may make, you know, the development of a new IP a little bit more palatable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, I mean, you mentioned the Star Wars going back. Like, I remember growing up having the original trilogy on VHS, the special editions on VHS, bought them again on DVD, bought them oh again on Blu-ray, yeah. going to buy them again on 4K, okay, whatever, digital, once yeah. I get one of those TVs. So, like, yeah. I don't know. It's personally nothing new to me. Well, I, that's what I was wondering. Is it really even new, that new to video games? Because, uh, like, like we were talking about earlier, on the NES, arcade classics were being released. Mm -hmm. That's on the exactly NES, right. Yeah. Right? We didn't own those arcade Pac-Man, yeah. so Galaga, but they're being uh, Space Invaders were all being... Actually, I don't think Space Invaders was ever... Actually and really things did get remakes on the Super Nintendo, like the Mario... Uh, all, -Stars, Clubs, all Stars. All Stars, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just more prevalent now, but I think I feel like well, it's always been... Even yeah. It's always been there, that. yeah. But that's what I was clarifying. Like, that's different than every single game being a sequel, having a number on the end of it, or every single well, game being based off something. Like, a remake or giving people another chance to play Link to the Past is different than, you know, Zelda 30 coming out and the 15th Mario game coming out and then the 16th Final Fantasy coming out. Like, well, I mean, but there are six Mega Man released on just the NES. Yeah. So I, I don't think the sequel, I don't think, like, sequelitis is new for video games either. Are yeah. any of this falls big games, not sequels? Mm. Yeah, very few. I mean, we always say it's super risky to release a new IP in the fall. Tacoma. Yeah. <laughs> Tacoma. <laughs> Early August. Shout out to Tacoma. <laughs> like everything, I noticed that at E3, like everything, like mm -hmm. Far Cry 4, 5? Five? 5. The new one's 5. 5. Far Cry 5 looks great, but I mean, it's 5, right? <laughs> like it's everything has yeah. like been around for a really That's long why, time. That's why, maybe, is that why like Horizon is, uh, mm. I, 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 I I could say maybe that's why Horizon is special, although uh, Horizon's gameplay isn't really doing a lot new. Sure. But, yeah. but it is a new property, mm -hmm. yeah. a new IP. Is a, I think the harpoons were cool. Yeah, I think we tend to get excited about things that are new. Like I think that's why a lot of us gravitated to something like Sea of Thieves or Spider-Man. I mean, granted, Spider-Man's not new, but this is a new game series. Well, I yeah. think that's part of what's like missing that. from this generation is last, last of us too. Yeah. Last generation had a couple of you know generation-defining games. Like it started with like Perfect Dark Zero and some weird stuff, and then they found their footing, and Gears of War came out. 
and Assassin's Creed came out. And, and Uncharted. AC, and Uncharted. Yeah. And, and AC1 wasn't a great game, but it definitely mm-hmm. set the tone for like, uh, you know, third person action, combat, exploration. And then by the end of the generation, every game kind of looked like yeah. that. And we're missing, I don't know that we've gotten that. I mean, maybe it just took a long time and the horizon's no. kind of fine. You're 100% it. right, though. This generation doesn't have nearly the amount last gen had from, you know, the, the Arkham games to yep. Infamous to. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean it's it's staggering compared to this generation. You look like Horizon's one of them. Yeah, but I mean the like, game the I games are great. The games are fun, but there there's not that like these are what video games are going to be about. Mm-hmm. Like we haven't made a shift. If you guys would have liked No Man's Sky more, like I did, <laughs> maybe you'd be happy with this. Uh, I mean Destiny maybe is that yeah, game. Yeah, I think so. I think Destiny is the game this generation that is in that same category. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andres mentioned, you know, several games, Wipeout, Crash Bandicoot, Skyrim, NES, and SNES console, Street Fighter 2, as stuff that's being, like, you know, remade or mm-hmm. recycled and brought up again. But, like, if you actually dig into it, it gets, like, it does seem to get a little bit, there's Ukulele, uh, Bomberman R, Thimbleweed Park, Metroid 2 coming out this summer, the original Xbox Duke controller mm-hmm. is being remade, right? Yeah. Because Xbox games are Our being cool. backwards compatible on yeah. the Xbox system. So there's Sega Forever that they just announced last week. All their old games coming to mobile. Final Sonic, Fantasy VII yeah. is being remade. Shadow of the Colossus <laughs> is being remade. Resident Evil 2 is being remade. There's Bloodstained, which is yeah. just remaking Castlevania. Yeah, yeah. so there, there is a lot of that going on. Sonic which, Mania, which is I don't an appetizer platter of old Sonic yeah. games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I don't know. I think it's cool. I don't think it's bad. It's no, just, I think I think it's interesting as, as long as we also still get the aforementioned new games. Yeah. We're gonna look back and it's called the remake teens. <laughs> <laughs> it just rolls off the tongue. Yeah. Roaring, roaring <laughs> 20s. Yeah. Roaring. Remake teens. <laughs> I was a little I was having a hard time coming up with a long list of new a big new IP this year. Horizon we mentioned. Nintendo has arms. Yeah. There's Neo. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. But in yeah, terms but of like a lot of, a lot of those really stuff. great games have been sequels so far. If you look at Nier, Persona, um, you know, you know, which is Zelda. Fine. Like Zelda. I, I, I sort of called out Final Fantasy for having 15 iterations, but they're only they're only 15 in name only. Like they're completely new worlds and game systems and yeah, inventing things sure. out of whole cloth. And even Zelda's like that. Like I, I also called out Zelda for having 30 sequels, but you know, it's so unafraid to completely. I mean, even before Breath of the Wild, to completely reinvent what a Zelda game is. I mean, Ocarina of Time wasn't just the 2D game transposed to 3D. Like that's very different. Yeah. Have you and guys Mar- read the review for Ever Oasis we just put up? Mm-hmm. It's a 3DS mm-hmm. game that came out, and I think Nintendo published it. But uh, it's uh, it's from the Secret of Mana Koichi Ishii. But it's like half um, town. Management and then half like Zelda dungeon crawling. Oh man, that's a Justin oh. game. It, just sound, it sounds like a totally cool like original yeah. game that uh, we we gave a really high score to yeah. mm-hmm. eight nine. So yeah, but takes place in Look a desert. That. You hate deserts. Mm-hmm. Known Justin fact: hate sand. Yeah, they don't. Uh, fun fact: no, a desert doesn't have to Dry have sand. Desert course. just means it gets everywhere. Rain don't don't desert does it rain me. there? <laughs> yeah, like there's a de- like the Arctic is a desert. Don't do that. <laughs> don't don't be that desert guy. <laughs> Marty's all worked up. <laughs> See, I thought you were making a joke, but you guys have actually had this conversation before. I feel like we have, honestly. Anyway, weird. I desert explained you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on. This is Anthony from Durham, North Carolina. He says, I visited Montana as part of a vacation to hike in Glacier National Park. Desert or not desert? Having planned, not desert, having planned this vacation before Ubisoft had announced Montana as the setting for Far Cry 5, I was that much more excited to experience the state once the location of the game was confirmed. I spent five days in Montana and was able to see a large portion of the state. I've got to say, Montana is beautiful. Out of all the states I've visited, Montana exemplifies the ruggedness of American wilderness perfectly. Mm -hmm. All right. (laughs) Mountains with glaciers, pristine rivers. Paid for by the council. (laughs) (laughs) Meadows blanketed in wildflowers, humongous lakes, quirky towns, abundant wildlife. All right. Go in the winter. Rural yeah. farmland. <laughs> if you like anything at all about the outdoors, you seriously have to go and experience this place for yourselves. <laughs> Traveling through Montana had me feeling like I was thrown into a past era, and that is an experience that I don't think is easily replicated anywhere else in America today. Nice. That's why I'm running for governor of Montana. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I now definitely cannot wait for Far Cry 5. I like how he says Montana is the most beautiful place, and he like can't wait to just wreck. I just want to kill everything. <laughs> just wreck it. Yeah. Burn those fields. Yeah. I think Ubisoft's location choice is a goldmine for this game. It is cool. the perfect setting for this kind of sandbox. From what footage we have seen, Ubisoft's portrayal appears to be very authentic, 
For example, there are Bible camps interspersed throughout the state that I noticed while driving on the smaller highways. Bible camps? I even came across, oh, yeah. well, there's like a religious cult For in the kids? Game. I even came across small like settlement villages that had a mercantile store with a single gravel road where the population had to be no more than 20 residents. Ah, yes. Uh, have I convinced you yet to check out Montana? <laughs> And what about Far Cry 5 are you most looking Who forward this? to? That was a long, long walk to that get to a Anthony v- from very Anthony. simple Durham. question. Anthony. He's like our remote man on the ground journalist who we sent to Montana. To We've hired back. him. Yeah. How's, we, how's Far Cry going to be? Yeah. In conclusion, <laughs> Far Cry 5, good or bad? <laughs> as soon as we learned the setting of Far Cry 5, we, we hired our freelancer, Anthony, yeah. and we sent him on location to Montana to check things out, <laughs> and he reports back that he thinks it's going to be pretty good, a like pretty good setting. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I was totally I mean, sold yeah. on Montana. I have no what they just told me it was in Montana. I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Has I like anybody Montana. here ever been there? Yeah. You've been there? Yeah, I've been to Montana. I mean, I've all never those been to Montana. Words, Does it check out? Yeah. So you got to tell us. I is there through. hang gliding? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the Far Cry games, Far Cry 3 and 4, were so I mean, 1 and 2 were great, too, but it was really 3 that you know steered the franchise in the direction it's going now. Oh, and um, they're, they're great, excellent games, but they're kind of dumb, you know, like just in storyline and in the just the over-the-top craziness of them. They're dumb in a good way. Um, and five, I don't know. Like, I feel like Ubisoft's kind of trying to have their cake and eat it, too, and they're making a very real political statement about America in 2017. And they're also like, now, nah, you know, you're paragliding around and flying a biplane. And you got a dog bud. Like, they, they kind of can't decide whether, like, no, it's just another dumb, cool, action-packed explosion Far Cry game. Yeah. Or... Or, or, you know, if they're going to try to go in the other direction. Well, so. to be fair, Ubisoft has never said they're trying to make a statement. Everyone has sort of implied that they're trying to make a statement. And to also be fair, it seems like they're trying to make a statement. Uh, but yeah, I completely agree that this is... No, I think uh, Far Cry 3 and 4 and even 2 have had uh, really good villains, and it seems like this is following in that. And like, yes, the villain is a, hits a little more close to home than, than Voss or Pagan Men, uh, but I think the setting of Montana and everything we've played so far seems like it is a super fun open-world sandbox that's going to lend to those exact same same sort of stories we had in three and four. Far Cry Five, you had me at hello. I will play you what, wherever, wherever, <laughs> wherever you go. Yeah, I got a dog. There's a button where the dog can even lick me. Even if right. Alex, Anthony. Anthony, Anthony, even if Alex, Anthony didn't like Montana, you'd still play. It. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I think the game. Looked- I just went to Montana. <laughs> Total crap. Got food poisoning. Never left my hotel. <laughs> well, Far Cry is gonna stick. Yeah, I'll feel less bad about blowing it all up. Yeah, there you go. I, you know, I I even just did it myself, but people get so hung up on, um, you know, the politics of the game and the storyline of the game that they're kind of ignoring all the cool, neat, like, open world, I don't know, like, the gameplay. I feel like uh, I want to dig more into and watch more videos about how that game is to play yeah. and uh, some of the neat stuff it's doing with, like, how it's doing away with, you know, the watchtower system mm-hmm. that's in every Ubisoft game by just letting you discover things by driving mm-hmm. by road signs or overhearing yeah. people talking. And, like, mm-hmm. it's got a re- lot of really cool, neat ideas that um, you know, I hope don't get completely lost and overshadowed and just people shouting about yeah. the, the mm-hmm. plot. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of Ubisoft games, did you see the thing about Beyond Good and Evil 2 today? What was that? Uh, oh, the art? The yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean thing? Yeah. yeah. What? So the, in, in like a background shot in the, in the I guess, the reveal trailer that they had for Beyond Good and Evil 2, there was a, an older woman in there, and she's wearing like a geisha outfit. She has like yeah. a white yeah. geisha. Looks basically. like a Japanese, like, and it's like, it's like exactly uh, an, an extra character from the third Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Yeah. And when you see them side by they, side, yeah. it's, like, it's like that old woman from Pirates of the Caribbean. They're sitting at this like council of pirates. Yeah. She's just in the crowd. Remember, it's not even I remember like, that woman. I remember just that council. In the crowd of, of Beyond Good and Evil 2. It's not even like, that looks like her. And you're like, no, that's her. Very clearly. It was like when uh, what was the Assassin's first Creed Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Stole art from. No, it was. Oh, uh, no. Syndicate was. It was. Uh, Brock Lesnar's tattoos, the wrestler. Oh, they showed like this this muscular dude in a boxing match, and they showed his tattoos, and everyone's was like, "That's that's literally a man." Well, in wasn't the there a portrait of? Yeah, in Assassin's yeah. Creed Four, there is a portrait of just a Sandy Shore. No, no, no. or Uncharted. Otherwise. Uncharted Four. Took, four. Yeah, yeah, had a the shot. And then it yeah. turned out that Uncharted, uh, in all the Uncharted games, like certain moment, like decorations of people's houses and stuff, they farm that out to third party studios. Yeah. And one of those well, studios, just, did, maybe Nathan Drake really liked Black Flag. Well, it's like. It's it's crazy. I was just reading an article on VG Junk, which I totally recommend. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry, it was it was on uh, Hardcore Gaming 101. Don't worry. Uh, no, I love Hardcore. Gaming. About uh, uh, how often art 
uh, like re- retro game art, box art, and even like in-game characters are all, so obviously yep. just traced <laughs> over Arnold Schwarzenegger, yep. oh, Sylvester yeah. Stallone, or even like famous fantasy paintings by artists like Frank Frazetta. Yeah, they uh, they just clearly just traced this character and then put them yeah. on the box art. Oh no! Uh, and then you see something like this. It's like it's literally this woman from Pirates of the Caribbean is just in the Do footage. Do you think it's like maybe it's canon asset? No, or I don't canon? think it's CG. she's. It was a real like she's a re- played by a real actress. Yeah, in I feel like it was a thing that Pirates. was meant to be a placeholder. Yeah, maybe. And like, like hey, like, we want a character that looks like this, and someone forget that forgot that they said that, <laughs> yeah. or like threw away that that post it, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh dang, that's just that character. Uh, I got to see this. Yeah, yeah. All right. it's pretty good. Uh, okay, it's time to share what we've been playing. <gasps> Who would like to share first? I, th- I always have the weirdest answer to this question. <laughs> it's so West Wing. <laughs> no, yeah, it was the West Wing for a long time. Um, <laughs> a GTA Five. Oh, well, you went back to GTA 5. Well, back so to the, well. the Steam Summer Sale is going on right now, and I played GTA 5 when it launched on my Xbox 360, you know, played it, loved it, and, you know, put it down. And uh, there's a new, really, really big, really extensive update to GTA Online. Is this why John Ryan's playing it again? It's so amazing. It's wow. like a, really? So GTA there's Online... A, there's a motorcycle they added that has physics-based flight to it, and so you just, you're just driving, and then you start, like, kind of lifting off. Yeah. And it's like a dream, dream kind of, or like in the original Super Mario, or in the Super Mario Bros. Three, and so you start lifting off, and then you can like hit in an afterburner, and you go boom, and you just like shoot up in the air, and you can get across the map in these big moon leaps. Now it's wonderful. I don't think people understand that GTA Online, uh, Rockstar has been updating it with substantial, substantive content updates I mean, that's, for three years. Like there's, a, if you haven't played GTA Online, there is a modern GTA game that you haven't played. Like that's that's like got to be part of the reason why. GTA 5 is still in the MPD top 10 every yeah. single and month. That's why, so my experience was, I, well, I got the game a little bit early, so <coughs> you know I played through the whole story, you know, did all the stuff, and then GTA Online came out. It was completely broken. It ate my progress two or three times, and I said, okay, I'm, you know, I'm done with GTA 5. And so I wanted to go check out what the online was about. It's on sale for 30 bucks now, so I bought it on Steam and have been puttering around GTA Online a little bit. Um, <laughs> It's it's like the new update. You get a bunker that you staff with like scientists and stuff that earn you tanks it's and like, like a super villain lair. Yeah, it's you, like this it's, like cement bunker. And then you go on missions people. with other people to try to like raid other people's bunkers, and it's like, and that's just like one of four or five big major updates that have come out for GTA Online. It's fun um, stuff. I will say it's very hard to. Um, I plan on writing about this on IGN, so I'm still collecting my thoughts. Um, You're gonna get scooped. Yeah, I just scooped myself, didn't I? Um, <laughs> It's hard to jump into. So first of all, you have to play the prologue first. You can't just jump right into GTA Online. So they force you to do one single player. The mission. prologue of the GTA campaign. Five. Yeah, which is sh- pretty short. It's like, short, but it's yeah. still just. I don't know why. Yeah. The snow and, level. Yeah. 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 And then you create a character, and then you have this tutorial, and it's like I, I wanted to just see what GTA Online is all about, but they really like hold you back for a long time before they set you loose. But when they finally do, it's a crazy experience. I've been playing Next Machina. Yeah. Mm, same. same, yeah. Which I know a lot of people in the office are, and I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm not cr- as crazy about it as a lot of people are. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm right there with you. Like, I don't hold it in the same regard as, uh, you know, Resogun or like. Yeah, Star no, Wars. I like. I think, uh, but I think it's a really smart, fun, very hard game. Yeah, it's you know? like it's you know it's an arcade uh, twin stick shooter, high score chaser, which is great. Yeah, it's it's totally up my alley. But when I came into the office, whatever last week, and everyone was like talking about it. And it was getting these great reviews, and they were likening it to Smash TV. And I was like, "Wow, this sounds amazing!" I like. I don't think it has. Uh, Smash TV is not that amazing when you go back to it now. But I like Robotron Smash TV. Twenty eighty four. Smash TV has a lot of personality, yeah. and that's what I think is missing from Next Machina. Actually, yeah. so you're just a generic guy fighting like generic uh, uh, alien bugs, saving generic scientists. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's a Eugene Jarvis joint. He did Defender, then he did Robotron. Eugene Jarvis worked on Next Machina. Yeah. Yep. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Well, all right. Yeah, and so he so after Defender he did uh, Robotron, which is I I think regarded as like a top five arcade Roto- game of Robotron, all time. It's, it's great. It's mm-hmm. people's some people's favorite game of all time. It's that big of a deal. But it was just like really active twin stick shooter that ended up having this perfect formula for surviving just long enough to get an extra life. And this this game doesn't have that, but it has this great um, combo system where you want to survive 
It's like more like Gradius, where like you want to survive with all your power ups for as long as possible, even though you have five lives, and you might even get more lives. But like those are worthless because you get really deep in the game and you're fully loaded. And if you lose out, yeah, then, then you lose like, everything. Yeah. Well, you lose one thing at a time, but you can lose everything. Yeah, I mean, when you get down to your last life, yeah, yeah, you yeah. probably lost everything. Yeah, and I like there's a lot, there's a lot of secrets mm -hmm. in every area. Yeah, uh, there's like hidden uh, humans to find. Yeah, and, of, and it feels like it has this cool like players. diorama look. Yeah, that you're sort I like, of like that. looking I into like this little thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it, the game lives and, and dies by leaderboards. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. don't have friends that are on leaderboards that matter to you, then it's probably not going to be that fun unless you're so good that you can get on the national leaderboard. Yeah, and then it might be fun for you. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's fun yeah. mm -hmm. for sure. You playing anything else, Sam? No. So, I'm uh, 95 hours into Persona Five. Ooh, wow. I'm, I'm going to finish it this long weekend. Uh, I think I think 95 hours might be the most time I've put into any video game yeah. uh, since I've started it has in this career. Account? Yeah, it has a, every time I save it has a count. Uh, it's incredible. I think it's my game of the year. Um, I love it so much. What about Zelda? It's incredible. I think it's my game of the year. I love it so much. <laughs> no, I think I think Zelda's. I think Zelda's, Zelda's obviously. Persona Five is awesome. It's uh, you know this uh, this isn't really a knock on the game, but it's almost like too big mm -hmm. for like I I just got like distracted and yeah. it's like. Uh, so it's I'm like when you're not in going through whatever a palace. Yeah. Like there's just like so much else that's going yeah. on in the game. You, you have to. You really have to get wrap hard your head to around actually it. like make progress. Through I, I, I've started taking notes of like characters. Yeah. Like this character is available these two nights of the week, so I want to like like cordon off my Fridays and Saturdays to call them in the game. Also, yeah. cordon in, off your Fridays and Saturdays to play Persona. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, that's happened a couple times. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, so I didn't. I couldn't get into Persona Four. So maybe you guys can help me or yeah. tell me um, because I got stressed out by. I know the whole game is about managing your day, yeah. managing your calendar, but it stressed me out because I wouldn't under like stuff's time gated. Like, mm -hmm. oops, you had two weeks to do this and you didn't do it, and now it's just in the past and you can't do it again. And that's really stressful. I, I don't like games that have points of no return, and Persona 4 is a whole game yeah. of points of no return. Like, the only major points of no return are very clear, and it's like, hey, you have to beat this palace in 19 days, or literally it's game over. Yeah. And so, like, it it's seems very like rarely of time. Yeah, yeah. I just, I got very stressed trying to manage, like, do I go to class, or do yeah. I do a sport, or do I, it's been a while since I played it, so I don't remember. But, yeah. like, all the other activities you can do, um, I, I, I don't know. So that turned me off of four. I felt like I couldn't play it without following a guy yeah. to like maximize my time. I didn't feel like I could just explore at my own pace. Yeah, I haven't touched a guide. And I was talking to Andrew about it last night. Andrew's obviously beat the game three times, knows everything. And he was talking about how like the end game deals with these specific characters. And he's really excited for me to get there. And I was like, oh, I literally have zero confidant level with them. I have not interacted with these characters whatsoever. And he's like, I don't understand what the end of the game is going to be for you. Yeah. Because like, I don't understand story-wise how any of this is going to happen. So yeah, well, we'll see what Maybe happens. I'll give it a shot and just uh, just not care. Yeah, so, I mean, okay, that's well, I, I left I don't that. care. Yeah, find who you want to kiss and kiss them. Persona 5. Just yeah. like life. And then tomorrow, or two days from now, we'll be playing Zelda DLC. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's out this Friday, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, really I'm definitely back. Yeah. 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 I know you guys are different yeah. levels of that. No, yeah, I'm going to... I, I mean, haven't. I have 450 Korok seeds. I'm going for it. Yeah, I haven't played it since I beat it back in March. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Me too. yeah. That'll be really fun to play over the long weekend. Yeah, my I, other uh, my other PSA for next week is uh, Until Dawn is free on PSN, uh, PS Plus. Until Dawn is one of my favorite. Uh, is that unlock on Tuesday? I think that unlocks on Tuesday. Yeah, it'll be the first Tuesday of the cool. of the month. Uh, and really incredible, fun, campy horror game. That's this really cool choose your own adventure that is a blast to play with a couple of friends and a couple of drinks. So highly recommend it. Yeah, I never played that one. Yeah, I guess it's free. Now. Free 99. Ex Machina, man. <laughs> what about it? I just I want another Geometry Wars. Well, I know it's a different development. Well, we got Geometry Wars three a couple years ago, and it wasn't actually. As great. Yeah, I didn't. It even, wasn't that great? I didn't even play that one. Yeah. It was one of those. I heard this favorably movies. compared to Geometry Wars. Yes, that was the last time I can remember. Leaderboards is what reminded me. That's Geometry the last Wars time two. I can remember trying Woo. to beat my friends on yep. the leaderboards. For me, it was Pac Man C E D X. Yeah, two. Good. One. It was one. And that brings us to Video Game 20 Questions. And uh, a couple weeks ago at E3, Whoa. a GameScoop fan <gasps> yeah, hand-delivered. Oh, that's awesome. Hand-delivered a few uh, suggestions. His name I was didn't look. Derek. Yeah, I didn't let Sam see. Uh, and so we're going to do one of those suggestions. That's so cool. Today, let the questioning begin. Does your character speak? I thought you were going to ask about glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. All right. Does your character bark? <laughs> um, how about, uh, let's just do after 2000 or not. Is this after 2000, 2000, January 1st, 2000? Yes. Okay, who speaks? Um, 
Is this game of the uh, uh, 360 PS3 Wii U era? No. Okay. Is this game on current consoles? No. What does that leave us with? That leaves us with the PS2, uh, late, GameCube, late Xbox. Late PS2, GameCube. No, no, early. Yeah, I always get that mixed yeah. up. You're right, yeah. Is this, a, is this from that era? <laughs> PS2, PS2, Xbox, GameCube? Yes. All right. Um, Those came out 2003. I don't know what I was talking about. Yeah. Is this a what console kind of exclusive? Yes. PS2. No, it didn't. Is it a Nintendo game? No, 9-11. No. Sam's called. burning a lot of your questions. Wait, I don't wait, know if you got wait. the paint. <laughs> 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 Where were you going for one of the... We had a sidebar. What I just have, happened? No. I, have, I know what it is. <laughs> wait. What were the what? questions? <laughs> I'm just kidding. We were arguing over... No. Yeah. Uh, he asked it's, if it's a console exclusive, uh, which it is, and if it's a Nintendo game, which it is not. Okay. Is it? Uh, was it an, an Xbox exclusive? No. All right. I feel like this is a PS2 exclusive. It's not Blink's the Time Cat. No, because there would be a PS2 exclusive. <clears throat> um... So PS2 exclusive where your character doesn't speak. Was this game uh was this game developed in America? No. Ooh, I better know what it is. Might be might be Eco or Shadow of the Classes. Oh no, you sort of like Yelp in those games. Yoda! Is this game uh, Japanese? Yes. That's ten. Well, it could have been, could it could have been a Ubisoft right. game. Gran Turismo. Kind of Grand no, your character speaks a ton in that game. The car talks. <laughs> honk, honk. Uh, is, is this game have multiplayer? Yes. Oh, it's definitely not Shadow Rico. Oh no. Helped you out there. Uh did Sony make this game? Uh no. But I feel like his pause means Sony may, may have meddled. Some Sony meddling. <laughs> they may have metal geared. It was at their E3 booth. <laughs> no, Metal Gear, that man talks far too much. Yeah. <laughs> uh Japanese. PS2 we're, game. We're really screwing this up. No oh, we're multiplayer. No. Oh, yes. Yes multiplayer. multiplayer. Yes multiplayer. I, mean, I, I don't ever think about PS2 games as being multiplayer. Japanese PS2. Wait, we don't know if, but it's not Sony, so it might be something like uh, Onimusha, which ooh, that, I feel like that man talks. Jean Renault is in that game. That, that has multiplayer. No, there's multiple people though. What about what about racing and party games? I don't think of Jap- Japan besides GT is racing party games. I'm really tripped up by a Japanese PlayStation game fighters? not made by Sony that's an exclusive. Maybe Fighters? Uh, fighters? Multiplayer? Maybe. I'm I mean, thinking. Gonna be a, I mean, it could be a shooter, I guess. I'm thinking about like. Uh, that was yeah, a good were there sequels? Yes. I'm maybe. thinking about uh, like an RPG with a mute protagonist, maybe, but they were all gone by then. Should we try to get a genre? A lot of sequels. I mean, that. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like. I mean, we don't know if it's the first of its name, though. He usually picks those. Well, but it's the else first of his name. Uh, I'm I'm also tripped up by the character not speaking. Actually, I don't know why. Do you play? Do you play as a human? No. <laughs> Could be a ship. Both, but Gradius Five. There's never been a multiplayer game with ships. Okay. That's not multiplayer anyway. <laughs> um. Uh. Do you, was this? Uh, you don't play. Z- okay. Do you play as some sort of vehicle? No. Wait. Sorry. That's fifteen. Oh goodness <laughs> no! gracious! Five questions left. Yeah. He asked if there's online multiplayer. I don't know why we're. Yeah, but I mean, like, of the PS2 era, that's that rare. That was like so calm. What about like the Warriors? We know. We know you don't play as a human. Wait. Could it be? We know a lot about Ballers. this, by the way, guys. Guys, we don't play as like a car, ship, or anything like that. We don't yeah. play as a person, so we play as some kind of animal. Final Fantasy XI? I guess you could play as a human in that. Yeah. Um, it was also on PC as well. Yeah, but it was a PS2. And there's sequels, so. PlayStation 2 exclusive. The Jack and Daxter. Made in Japan, type not things. by Sony. Um, uh, sequels. Daxter's US. Uh, so, wait, like Konami, Capcom. Yeah, Square. Where, probably. I think of multiplayer when I think of those guys. Yeah, I think more Capcom, Konami. I mean, can Metal Gear any of the uh, Metal Gear games no. fit? You don't play as a human. No. You play as a human in Metal Gear. <laughs> I think. <laughs> what about Ratchet and Clank? No, that's uh, Insomniac. That's US. Um. Yeah, that's why I'm getting tripped up. It can't be that. Uh, it can't be that burglar raccoon. <laughs> The Thievius Raccoonus? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Should we ask if it's a platformer? Or is that, I, don't, I don't know. It just doesn't sound like it is. Yeah. What this, about sport, weird sports This games? game widely considered good. Yes. And it has sequels. Mm-hmm. Uh, we only got three questions left. I kind of want to know if they're still making them today. 
But we only have a few well, questions that's, left. Uh, yeah. If there's sequels, I mean, there could have only been you know, in the last 10 years or so, right? Um, that's my rating? Like, or popularity? Or I know it was well liked. Uh, Katamari? No. Yeah, Katamari Ooh. Awesome. It's pretty good. I mean, I that you don't you don't hard. play as a human. The game has sequels. I don't know if the first one in multiplayer. The series definitely has multiplayer. The first one did not have multiplayer. But the series definitely has multiplayer. Do you you play as a little man? You play as the no. You play as the son of the king of the cosmos. He's definitely not a human. <laughs> right. You're the prince of all cosmos. I know. <laughs> what would be something that we could use to eliminate not only that game but other games? Because now that we're down to four questions, Hot Tunes. <laughs> it was Namco made that one. Uh, n- uh, no, t- uh, I think Namco published it. It was, uh, Kira Takahashi who made it. No, but I'm, yeah. Is this a Namco published game? Yes. <gasps> Maybe the original Katamari did have multiplayer. <laughs> did this game? <laughs> did this game have a... This country? game cost $20 when it came out. Well, though Katamari cost 20 That was a Well, do you question. really want to narrow it down to Katamari? I'm, r- I'm relatively certain yeah. it's Katamari. Did this game, is this game known for well, its... Well, I, I think this might help. Well, what were you going to do? I was going to ask about soundtrack. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Is this game known for its like really awesome, jazzy soundtrack? Yes. Good it. Katamari Damasi. Yeah. It is Katamari. Woo! Great. Did that uh, game have multiplayer? It had like a multiplayer mode. Yeah. So cool. I didn't remember. Yeah, that I remember at all. split screen. Split yeah. screen and you're just rolling. Yeah. Get the heck yeah. out of that game. No, 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 yeah. no, no. Yeah. I don't game. think your character ever speaks in the game, though. No. I, know, I feel ca- like you just in the Cosmos speaks you just could you. scream that when you're dead. Your dad just taunts you. What a uh, wonderful worst game. dads in games. I was worried you guys were going to ask about genre, and I would probably say I action puzzle? puzzle, like a- yeah, action Collect-a-thon. puzzle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they never made like a, a Katamari which scales like the way a game could now. Yeah, yeah. Like man, that's you, all, yeah. You like asked that game everything. Totally you were yeah. going to ask if they were still making them today, and I think the last they made one for mobile. It was just really bad. It's like a tappy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember how you could only tapper. get to a certain place, and then it would kind of reset, and then you could get to a bigger place. Yeah, you'd almost like evolve, and you'd become super huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would yeah. be cool to see a really smooth version of that. Yeah, actually. my game rules. That game was kind of a phenomenon when it was. Yeah, yeah and totally. it was twenty bucks. I remember that game. I don't coming remember out. it being twenty. It was released bucks. for twenty bucks, yep. and I was like, "Holy moly!" It's, that's like a whole. That's a full game. That's a full. Like, and it's an awesome game. Yeah, it's yeah. a really, really good game. I wish I had swag from that game. I bet there was something cool for it. Yeah. I wasn't working here at the time. His office is down, like down the street. Yep. You can go rob it for swag or yeah. ask him for swag. It, it was Namco that like is listed as the developer. The, yeah, yeah. Two is so good too. Was that we yeah. love Katamari? Is that what it's called? With the ro- you had to collect a yeah. thousand roses, yeah, ten thousand yeah. roses. Yeah. Thing. I remember going to uh, like preview events for Namco, where like yeah, that game it went, that game series went on into like the Xbox 360. Yeah, yeah. Katamari Forever. And then yeah. there's Nobi Nobi Boy. Yeah, but yeah, that was a that was a <laughs> swing real and a miss. Weird, <laughs> real, real weird thing. Yeah, but something just got accomplished in Nobi Nobi. Right? Like, they like finally reached Pluto or whatever, Pluto or but as far they, as uh, <laughs> but they had to cheat it by giving people like insane multipliers for their yeah. for their little for their boys. Yeah, <laughs> their boys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for the uh, suggestion there, Derek yeah. Katamari yeah. Damacy. Uh, you guys are on a roll. You guys haven't lost in a long time. Woo. Yeah, you guys got to start start stumping us. I think. Maybe. You know, part of it is that uh, I do feel we like find the rules. No, I, well, no, I think I think that's fine. I think. I mean, sorry, I, do we refine our questioning so much that you just guys you know how to get there? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I'm just like, you know, I, right out there. I feel like I have to have I have to have some sort of frame of reference for the game and like either yeah. have played or have like followed it. Sure. So there are a lot of suggestions for games that I'm just not really familiar yeah, with. Maybe sure. you can study up and get yeah, some weirder maybe, ones. Yeah. Uh, but that is all the scoops we have for you this week. Next week is a shorter week for us here at IGN. We have Monday and Tuesday off for the holiday, long weekend, and then I'm out on Wednesday when we normally record. So uh, Game Scoop will be coming to you next week. It'll just be coming a little bit later in the week. So please, please, please be excited. Please understand. Please be excited <laughs> for Game Scoop next week. Uh, but thank you, Justin. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Marty. My name is Damon. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. And we're out. <laughs>